Tropical disturbance organising in the Bay of Bengal on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for May the 9th. Here's a look at the global picture right now. Still no active tropical cyclones, but one could be well and truly on the way with chances continuing to ramp up in the Bay of Bengal. Code yellow for this system, which could potentially cause substantial impacts to parts of the Bay of Bengal coastline in Myanmar, Bangladesh or indeed India. 23 days until Atlantic hurricane season though, and there's no areas of interest still at this point, which is fantastic news. A few flooding and thunderstorm concerns across the United States right now, with one or two little frontal systems crossing the Atlantic, but generally the basin is quiet. Western Pacific also quietening down after those disturbances we were looking at, and look towards the left-hand side, those two areas of interest, a 90% chance now for the Bay of Bengal, it's pretty much certain now that it's going to form, and a 40% still for the area of interest in the South Indian Ocean, which is right around now probably doing its U-turn, not far from the coast of Indonesia, and will turn back out towards the west-southwest. Models have delayed its uh, development, and indeed it doesn't look very good at all right now, uh, but towards the end of the five-day period, it does look like it could pick up for this system, so we still have it at 40%. As for the Bay of Bengal low, 90% right now, a circulation may already be developing and convection uh, is looking fairly decent as well, uh, so we'll see whether that gets tropical cyclone status fairly soon. Here is satellite imagery of the last 24 hours and look towards some of those red zones, mainly over the Indochina region, showing the massive amounts of the largest amounts of rain falling there, uh, torrential in those red zones as they appear throughout that loop. And here is the latest satellite imagery. That uh, tropical system certainly looks good. So possibly one or two little echoes in the background suggesting that it could already be a tropical cyclone. I think it's got just a little bit further to go, but it surely will happen fairly soon now. And the big question now will be exactly where it ends up and how strong it will be. Here is some more satellite imagery. Perhaps convection uh, not completely over the center is probably the only thing I would really say on this as we look at the infrared imagery. The center is probably lingering along that uh, eastern edge of the big dark areas there. Uh, but it's looking pretty good. Convection pretty decent. Look at those yellow colors there, well into the minus 80s, and we usually expect that here in the Indian Ocean. Um, and so it looks like it's having a good start. Um, it's taken a while for it to get uh, sorted out uh, because this was on the models for ages now. Here's that other system on the southern side. You can just about see some of the islands of Indonesia on the right hand side of that picture. Uh, but this system really struggling at the moment with no visible center. And here is just a look at the radar imagery across the coastline there from India right round to Myanmar, at least what we can see of it. Sea surface temperatures piping hot in the eastern Pacific, well above 30 degrees Celsius now, possibly getting close to 32 near the eastern coast, or rather the eastern part of Mexico, Oaxaca and Chiapas. And in the Atlantic, getting really warm in the Caribbean, either side of Cuba there, getting close to 30 degrees. The loop current looking good, Florida Bay and the Gulf Stream also. North Indian Ocean, very warm, over 30 degrees Celsius, pushing close to 32 as well, with warm SSTs all the way up to the coast line so it is uh, all the ingredients are there energy wise southwest indian ocean continuing to drop away uh, mauritius still looking on to around 27 degrees celsius waters and around 26 to 27 in la reunion madagascar holding on the australian region as well you can see those temperatures still holding on there too but generally it really is shutting down for the low 26 degrees already and the South Pacific, those temperatures receiving that massive Pacific Ocean, uh, still very warm SSTs near the Solomon Islands. And in the Western Pacific, those sea surface temperatures continuing to expand into the Gulf of Tonkin there, almost to Hong Kong now, and along the eastern coast of Taiwan, those temperatures really getting up there now to 26 degrees into the East China Sea. 
Sea surface temperature anomalies, unfortunately, look how warm it is compared to average in the North Indian Ocean. Just as this system rolls around, we're looking at around a 2 to 3 degree temperature anomaly above. The Atlantic is well above average as well in the areas that matter. And the Eastern Pacific, the El Nino effect, looks like it's on its way with those uh, cool areas gradually receding, especially closer to the equator. Warm as well there in the South Pacific. Here's the oceanic heat content, still some of it holding on in the Coral Sea and in the South Pacific, but we're just probably not really going to get the systems now uh, very late in the typical time period. And there's the Western Pacific getting pretty good there now. Uh, really high oceanic heat content values in the Philippine Sea. Eastern Pacific hasn't changed very much, but it already is off to a head start compared to what we were looking at last year. So then let's take a look at what the GFS has in mind for the next uh, five days, the short range. First of all, this system that really wraps itself around within the next 48 hours, and by the time we get to the 12th there, possibly sooner, so that's within 72 hours, we could be looking at a hurricane equivalent storm, category one, with winds of 110 to 120 kilometers per hour sustained, and possibly more. This uh, version of the GFS run uh, is quite sedate compared to previous runs. We're looking at category four, maybe even category five, for the Bay of Bengal. We can't rule out pretty much any intensity at the moment. Some of the models are still uh, trending very deep like the ECMWF and the ICON um, and the GFS might just swing back to a stronger storm later on. It's still very early days, the system's only just developing and so we probably can't really get a good fix on it yet. Look at the uh, rainfall expectations. GFS has tempered those expectations as well, interestingly, but we're still looking in excess of 12 inches in some areas, uh, possibly quite far away from the storm. You can see the Yangon area there in Myanmar getting close to 16 inches. That's uh, 400 millimeters and 300 millimeters possible over large parts of northern Myanmar. The Andaman Islands possibly getting to 8 inches there. That's 200 millimeters, but I expect that this might be trending a little bit low and the GFS may be underestimating this a little bit but only time will tell. Into the moderate range then and this is what we have in store. We're actually looking at the Western Pacific first of all uh, for a potential system that forms near the end of this moderate range towards day 10. A system that churns up in the uh, South China Sea just off the coast of Luzon. Very late on in that period in the medium range so I wouldn't put much faith into that at the moment but nonetheless that's what the GFS model is showing there and systems in May can form in that location more so in some years than others. Here's a wide shot of the Indian Ocean with those two systems. First of all, obviously the cyclone moving into Myanmar, and then that other system which has that second wind as it moves down towards the south there. Interesting how that is still being depicted on some of these models. I think three of the four major models have it now. Um, and so that's why we've kept it at a 40%. There it is, a clear tropical storm as it drifts southwards, doesn't affect any land areas, but it sure is a quite a late time for a system like that to form in their basin. That's all the serious stuff done. Take a look at the Force 13 merch store where we have all our usual items as well as our full season and individual storm animations. Scan the barcode, it'll take you right there. And are still waiting for a Hone t-shirt which will still be headlining our shop window until that blasted storm forms. And it doesn't form in the Silly Range either, it's the Western Pacific we're looking at there in the Silly Range. That system, after moving across Luzon, expands rapidly to become an enormous system. I'm not sure if it's even tropical there, but it continues off northeastwards, passing by the uh, Ryukyu Islands and then on towards the main islands of Japan, then scoots up off towards the northeast. Enormous system near hurricane force winds or typhoon force winds, and then off it goes well out to sea, well towards the northeast. Early season surprise, possibly. Will it be tropical? Big question mark over that, but it is very long range, so I wouldn't worry too much. You can discuss that and anything in the world of tropics or weather on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical and general weather chat, with over 3,000 other weather watchers from around the world. On this day, what a peach of a storm we saw on May the 9th, 2000. Typhoon Damre, the first Category 5 
uh, typhoon of the millennium and there it was moving off towards the northwest and what an impressive looking eye and eye wall it had there on this imagery well into the minus 80s wrapped all the way around the eye which was probably in the teens celsius uh, if not even higher a very powerful storm what do you what's what strength do you think it reached i would say probably at least 180 miles per hour back to this year and we are looking out for those first names of the Northern Hemisphere which would really get people excited. Arlene in the Atlantic, Adrian in the Eastern Pacific and of course it's still Hone in the Central Pacific. 16 storms so far this year, that sounds pretty low, it probably is. In the Western Pacific the next name is Moa, in the North Indian Ocean it looks like Mocha could be upon us. Um, lots of fake news out there right now saying it's already formed, it, I can assure you it hasn't. IMD aren't expecting it to be named for a couple of days yet, I think it could be sooner. In the Australian region next up is Jasper, Southwest Indian Ocean, Fabienne and South Pacific, it's Lola. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll see you again tomorrow night.